Continuing on with the RBD bullet solver and material fracture, in this video we're going to be going over how we can have geometry collide with the geometry in our simulation in order to do things like fracture it. So to start off with, we're going to need geometry to collide with. So we're going to drop in a sphere. You can use whatever geometry you choose, but I'm gonna use a sphere for this. I'm gonna just go ahead and drag this up and over. I right, go ahead, set the display flag here and bring that out. I can set this to a polygon. I'm just gonna up the frequency just a little bit, as well as drop this uniform scale, maybe to something like 0.3. And let's move this away just a little bit more. Now I set this to wood. I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to concrete just for our simulation here. And then let's go ahead and play this and see if I actually use the bullet solver and bring this back to frame one. You can see that we don't have much going on, it is breaking a little bit, so we wanna get rid of that. So we need to up our constraints here. So let's set this to maybe 400, and I think that should be good. So now you can see it's not breaking, just sitting there, which is what we want. So now if I bring our sphere back up and bring that back out as well, in order to have this sphere collide with our geometry, we're going to need to activate it. And the way that we do that is we use an RBD configure node. So if I go ahead and drop that in, you can see we have a bunch of options here. So you can see we can set the different weights um, as well as do some different things in here. So what we're looking for is we're going to use the activate. So once we click that, it sets it in our simulation to be active uh, and able to actually collide with stuff inside of our simulation. So now we just need to give it some velocity so that it actually is going to hit the geometry that we have over here. And the way that we can do that is using a point velocity node. So all I'm going to do here is go up and add some velocity to this. And if we look down at our gizmo right here, you can see that the X direction is where our sphere is moved into the positive X. So we need to have it animated to move into the negative X direction. So let's go ahead and set this to something like negative 10 maybe. And then all we have to do from here is connect this into our bolt solver, into the collision geometry, so the fourth input. And now we should see, if we go back to the start of our simulation, you can see our sphere is right here showing up. So now as we click play, we should see that our sphere is launched to the left here and should collide with our geometry. So it's doing what we want, but it's not really breaking it because it's the glue is too strong. So let's go ahead and go back into this velocity and let's up this, maybe let's maybe triple that. And we'll jump back to the beginning and see what this gives us. So launch is a lot harder and breaks off a bunch more pieces. You can see that it shatters it and falls back to being stable on the ground with all of our pieces spread around like so. So that's pretty much the basics of it. If you want uh, something like wood, let's go ahead and set this to wood and let this calculate. And this is going to try to calculate a lot. Don't want that. So now if I go ahead and play this, you're gonna see the it's gonna take some time because this is a little bit more intensive, but it's not gonna go through the wood like you would somewhat expect. And this is because the ball is not going fast enough and the wood is just too thick. So we're gonna go ahead and let's make this a lot thinner. So if I set this to something like 0.1 and I go ahead and play this, 
you can see that it just flies straight through the wood like you would expect something like a cannonball to do. Uh, it's more natural and it just shatters the wood, doesn't really get slowed down. So this is basically how you're going to set up any sort of collision inside of your simulations. Use it to do all sorts of things, like I said, cannonballs going through wood, uh, maybe golf balls flying through glass windows, things like that. But hopefully this helps you out. I do have a bunch more Houdini tutorials on my channel. So if you're interested in learning more about Houdini, then I would go ahead and see what else you can learn from what I have on my channel. As well as subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. I am planning on doing a bunch of stuff with uh, some renderers, like uh, Redshift is mainly what I use right now. Think about using Octane as well. So you probably see some of at least Redshift, if not Octane as well. Some different things on how to do things inside of Houdini using those renders. So if that's some um, stuff that interests you, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Um, and make sure you check out anything else that you're interested in. But hopefully this helped you out, like I said. And thank you all for watching. Have a good day.